and welcome to our next top tips for archaeology graduates. Today we're joined by Ben. Hi Ben, how are you? Hi Penny, I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Ben is a National Secretary for the Prospect Union. So Ben, could you tell us what is a National Secretary? What is your job and what are some of the things that you do? Okay, so my role is sort of twofold. Uh, I manage a team of, I think last time I checked, about 18 people who variously undertake negotiations, personal casework, consultation activities on behalf of our trade union members. Um, and then the other part of my role is similarly undertaking negotiations, personal representation, consultation work for a number of member areas that I've got direct responsibility for. So I've, those are my two main hats, really, ma manager and, uh, and senior trade union official. Can you tell us a little bit about the Prospect Union? What does Prospect represent? OK, so we are uh, a specialists union for the most part. Uh, covering a wide range of different industries, sectors, public sector, private sector, uh, uh, and different employment areas. And those range pretty much as broadly as you might imagine there are ranges of specialism. So uh, astronomers, nuclear scientists, freelance arts and entertainment specialists and uh, a particular reference hopefully to uh, to archaeology students lots of archaeologists and lots of heritage sector workers so we're the largest union for example representing workers in the heritage industries so you're the, a good person to be talking to about union representation in archaeology and heritage then what are some of the things that you enjoy about your job about being uh, working in a trade union um as you might expect me to say, the sense of being able to help people at work, you know, whether that's resolving issues, conflict, tackling injustice, unfairness, discrimination, uh, but also that sense of helping people get on in their careers and, and, and generally the experience of trying to make work a better place, uh, uh, more rewarding, both financially, uh, but also in terms of the fact that we spend an awful large part of our time at work. So the more we can make it an enjoyable experience, uh, the better it is for everyone. Yeah, that, so that, that must be very rewarding, but it must also be quite challenging if you're, you're working around uh, areas of discrimination and, 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 and negotiating new yeah. contracts for people yeah and, and and it's unfortunately the case that often by the time members feel that they need to contact their trade union for support it usually means things have either gone wrong or are about to go wrong so it can be challenging in the sense that you, you're often dealing with people in difficult situations uh, potentially in state of crisis worried about their future or, or having to deal with with just sort of unpleasant uh, and potentially unlawful circumstances so we always get to meet people in some degree of conflict and, and it's then into sort of problem solving mode but that that brings its reward as well as its challenge yeah um, I think that's that that uh, sort of identification that it's problem solving that you're working in is a really interesting insight into what you're doing. We talk a lot with students about how archaeology leads to good problem solving skills, and there's a there's a nice example yeah. of that. How did you get into to working for Prospect then after your archaeology degree? Uh, so I graduated in, what was it, 97 and was fortunate at the time in that I was pretty much able to go straight out into field work with a number of um, different units as a practicing field archaeologist. Uh, and I did that for about four years, I think, in total. And then when I was working as part of a consortium of the Wessex and Oxford uh, units on what was subsequently to become Heathrow Terminal 5, um, there was a lot of sort of union activity around that where we were desperately trying to sign people up to the union and get enough of a foothold to be able to secure collective bargaining recognition. Uh, and we were quite successful in, in that regard, myself and a number of colleagues, uh, but unfortunately, that, that, that led to me uh, becoming less favourable in the eyes of my then employer, who I think took a, a somewhat dim view at the time of, of, of attempts to unionise the workforce. Uh, and in consequence of that, I spent some time out, uh, did a stint in Ireland as a field archaeologist on some different projects, 
and then finding it difficult to resume that fieldwork career when I came back was coincident with my then equivalent trade union official of the time pointing me towards uh, what was called the Organising Academy, which is a school for union activity uh, that the Trade Union Congress, the TUC, run, where they have a kind of year-long study programme to take people who are interested in trade union work as a career and then place them with a, a union on a sponsor basis. So I was lucky enough to get a place on the TUC Organising Academy uh, and was subsequently sponsored by Prospect and then a year later was substantively employed by them in an organiser role. And through that, I've then progressed through being a negotiations officer and then back in 2017, promoting into the, the sort of hybrid management and, and frontline official role I have today. So it was sort of serendipity meeting someone who said, there's this opportunity, you're passionate about union work, you should, you should take it up. Yes, it wasn't planned, um, but it came at the right time and yes, was able to make good use of the enthusiasm I'd previously shown and, and some aptitude, hopefully, for, for getting people actively involved in the, in the union as archaeologists. Yeah, fantastic. So do you still draw on the skills that you developed in archaeology um, in what you're doing? Are there any kind of things that you think, oh, I'm really glad that, that I developed that skill while I was an undergraduate that you use today? I don't use my surveying as much as I used to, it's fair to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, a a absolutely. I mean, the general sort of approach and critical thinking and problem solving skills that I think are absolutely part and parcel of what makes a good archaeologist, I draw on constantly because I'm forever in scenarios where a personal case is different, even though it might have similar themes around, is it bullying, is it harassment, is it around performance at work? So the type of issue I might be dealing with may be similar, but every context is different. So you're always having to apply a kind of structured approach to a similar but different set of circumstances in order to try and find out what's happened, what does it mean, how best might we go about sort of resolving this. Uh, and again, you know, if we're looking at a lot of documentary stuff, so we'll often be reviewing policies, proposals, framework, consultation documents, and some of those kind of source analysis skills of, of not only reading what something says, but understanding who wrote it, who did they write it for, what was the purpose of writing it, you know, that sort of anthropology of text piece is, yeah. is really useful uh, in, in understanding not just the content but but the perspective behind things which again is really helpful in structuring you know our, our responses to consultations structuring our stance in, in negotiations etc it effectively sounds a bit like we could draw parallels between dissertation research and the kind of things that you do now like there's a direct relationship between that archaeological mindset of not only appreciating kind of the way the data comes together but also the context in which it comes together and that that process of, of kind of coming to an interpretation that you do in your, your dissertation I think that that's there's some really nice parallels there. Yes yeah being able to not only put together a good argument and understand why it's a good argument but similarly to be able to deconstruct another's argument as to why it needs to be uh, uh, amended so yes. Yeah, that's some really nice overlaps. And so if this interview has inspired any of our undergraduates to, to follow in your footsteps, what, what top tips or advice would you like to give? Um, you'd probably expect me to say this as a trade union official that will advocate the, the benefits of trade union membership, but, but I'd very much encourage people to get involved in their trade union at work or, 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 or even as a sort of student's union, because the best way to pick up the experience the skill set to be able to go into trade union activity is less through sort of formal uh, courses, although you can you know, undertake degrees in industrial relations and the like, and more by practice, you know, by getting involved as an active member, as a representative, that gives people really good exposure to picking up the leadership and management skills to be able to construct good arguments in negotiations and there will always be an appetite within any trade union to look at developing people who show that aptitude with a view to them becoming sort of trade union officials of the future. 
So it's very much something that people can get into immediately, hands on in the context they're currently in, and mm -hmm. and, and and learn a whole lot of useful life skills, particularly around that sort of leadership management and effective communication stuff as, as a consequence. Yeah, so the moral of the story is join a union and all of our students that will be members of their students union. And I know some of them are very active in promoting issues around equality and, and, and rights and access and things like that. Thank you, Ben, so much for joining us and uh, talking today about your experiences with Prospect Union and as the National Secretary. Thank you to everyone who's watching. Join us again more next time for more top tips for archaeology graduates.